This is just a brief tutorial on the direct shear test, which is a test that's conducted on a rock joint, um, usually on core, um, where a rock joint is identified. Um, for instance, you have a piece of core, 50 millimeter diameter, say, and we have identified a rock joint that is critical to our design. And then you will put it in a direct shear apparatus. You basically cast it inside of uh, a couple of boxes, okay? And you put them together in a machine um, and drive them under force with a normal stress uh, or a range of normal stresses. Uh, and from that, uh, you plot, uh, plot it up and you come up with a, a shear strength uh, failure criterion. So the question here, um, it says that we have some, uh, a rock joint in uh, some wall of sandstone. Uh, it asks to plot the data in more Coulomb space, uh, determine the failure envelope and the parameters and make some comments. So here's our data here. Okay, we have uh, five direct shear tests um, at a range of normal stresses, the stresses acting on the failure plane uh, from 50 to 400 kPa. And then we have the shear stress that uh, induces failure. So the force is turned into a stress um, to give us a, a shear stress at failure. Well, one of the first questions is, in our test, did we select an appropriate range of normal stresses? Well, that depends on your project. Uh, for example, if you have a, a slope problem, okay, say you have a sliding wedge, um, and you, you basically want to do the tests um, so that sigma n is in the range of the uh, sigma n that you expect to experience in the field. Okay, so first off, we are going to plot up our data here. Okay, so this is in uh, classic Moore Coulomb space, sigma n, normal stresses, and uh, tau at failure, or sometimes people just use sigma um, in here, and you can plot more circles and so on. Um, but these are the uh, failure points um, from our data set. So we have uh, normal stresses of 50, 100, 200, 300, and 400 kPa. And these are the failure values. All right, <clears throat> what do we see so far? Well, it looks like we have uh, a pretty good linear relationship going on here, okay? And it seems that we should be able to pretty easily uh, fit a best fit curve or a failure envelope. Okay, so uh, the more Coulomb, right, uh, say we have tau of f is equal to c plus the normal stress tan of the friction angle. And these are effective stress parameters, right? So poor wet water pressure has to be accounted for. Accounted for. Okay, so we want to fit a curve like this to our data. <laughs> and you could do this with sort of trial and error, um, moving your C and phi around. Or you could do some kind of regression approach. And, and in this case, I did a regression. But you have to be careful. You know, the results that the computer spits out uh, maybe don't make logical sense for whatever reason. Um, but really, you have to consider it. Okay, you have to consider what, uh, what, what kind of findings you have and, and if it agrees with your observations and your judgment. So in this case, I got a cohesion of 12.7 kPa and a friction angle of 31.7 degrees. Now, what you'll want to do is compare this with the description of the rock joint. Its roughness, you know, what kind of condition it was in, um, what kind of infilling it had, and see if it had, uh, you know, a, if this is a reasonable representation 
of those physical observations. Now, although this is a regression line that uh, has a really good fit, to me, uh, maybe a little bit steeper line um, with a slightly lower cohesion might have also, um, you know, been, been a pretty reasonable fit. So there is some judgment here, um, but really, uh, you know, we have to explain our rationale for how we arrived at it. And in this case, it's from uh, linear regression. Now, sometimes the data points will imply something maybe not so linear. They might imply something um, more nonlinear, okay? Right. And really, for the most part, uh, it's well known that a nonlinear failure envelope seems to be most common with rock joints. And there's a criterion called the Barton Bandis criterion that, uh, that fits this very well. And that uses the parameters JRC, the joint roughness coefficient, and JCS, or the, the joint wall compressive strength, and, and also makes use of a basic or residual friction angle uh, of that rock joint to, to help you come up with a nonlinear uh, failure envelope. And at any given point, right, that could be linearized, and you can come up with an instantaneous C and phi. So that's the kind of thing you want to look at a bit more if you have uh, observed really nonlinear conditions. And you can look in uh, Hooke's Practical Rock Engineering. If you want to get more information about